morning, you guys. I wanted to give an outreach update for India. This is from November of 2022. Now, even though that's when uh, they prepared this update, the work that went on, this is probably for um, maybe a year or two prior to that, some of the things that, that are going to be reported on, okay? So this is always to let you guys know the good work that you're part of, not just what our ministry is doing with God sending us around the world and the people that we're reaching, the lives are being saved and changed, but also our outreach ministries and the good work that they're doing, and we're partnered with them, so we're part of that. So here we go. This is Sristi. She is a student at our Christian school in the village of Sadagat. And look at her little serious face, probably because the sunshine is, is in her eyes there. And she's a beautiful little girl. We're going to start with Yeshu Sat Sangati meeting. Uh, that means Jesus Fellowship Group. Now here, you see, there's Pastor Dauber. He's teaching. He said, today we have nearly about 58 house churches in 30 different villages. And we thank God for helping us, coming this much with prayers, uh, helping, for helping us coming this much, probably this far, with prayers of Three Hearts Church Congregation, Sister Sherry, Brother Scott, and Kennedy for always being there for praying and helping us. We are committed to bringing good news to those in our rural women through Yeshu Sat Sangati and its surrounding communities. We are considered ourselves to be a family. We thank God this rural area women and community are at Jesus Fellowship, are a family of believers in our Lord Jesus Christ, ministers diverse in interest, gifts, and levels of spiritual growth. And that's true, the body of Christ, we're all at different levels of growth. We all have different talents and gifts and abilities, and it's amazing when God brings us all together to see what he is going to do because he uses us for his glory. And here, pastor is sitting here and teaching when he's, uh, this reminds me of when Jesus sat and taught the multitudes. You see pastor there, and you see they're gathered around listening. And what a beautiful backdrop the Himalayan mountains are too, as you look out across there. That's beautiful, beautiful backdrop. Pastor is teaching here, this is the village of Rotu Kibeli. And Pastor shared, we seek to provide a loving, spirit-filled atmosphere in which our, they call it YSS, yeah, Yeshu Sat Sangati Fellowship, so YSS for short, members can flourish in their commitment to Jesus Christ. So Three Hearts Ministry continues to thank God for forwarding this journey to preach the gospel in this rural area through YSS, this is the vision to keep preaching the gospel and telling all of these people the good news of Jesus Christ and what he did for all of us. Meetings are the main part of Three Hearts Ministry. In is meeting, we make a relationship with a villagers and share the gospel in these people. In this meeting, people share their problems and needs, and we try to help them by praying for them and just to help for solving their problems by God's grace. If they can be a help to these people, then they're able to help, and many times that brings them and their family to Jesus. Anything that they can do to be a help, um, you know, the Bible tells us when you see your brother or sister in need, um, we're to help them if we're able to, if it's in, in our power to do that in Jesus' name, right? So we are doing those things. Pastor and the church there are doing those things. And otherwise, they're lifting their needs up to the Lord, and God is moving. The next is Women Empowerment Program. This is the Dairy Farming and the Goat Project. And this is one of the things that was on my mind that I know uh, we completed this a year or two ago, and I'd been waiting on this report, and I'd been bugging Pastor about this report, but, you know, they had a lot going on. Um, for those of you who may not be aware, Pastor Dauber, just this past year, 
had, uh, or this year, he had surgery. He had that uh, surgery on his hip and his leg to take out that plate that they put in there when his car went off the side of the mountain back in 2016. Um, so he had that surgery, and so he was, you know, down with recovery time, and, and all of that was going on. And, you know, Surab was uh, stepped up in his stead overseeing, you know, the house churches and the ministry work. And so we... Um, so I'm just thankful that, you know, for when, when they got, get the reports out to us and we're able to see the good things that we're, we're participating in. So take a look here. The dairy is helping the widows and left out women of the village who did not have any kind of su sustain, probably any way to sustain themselves, sustain income to make their children eat and for providing education to them. Um, they don't have it here, but I believe they shared with me, it was like 20, I thought it was 20-something women. It seemed like there were so many widows, and then there were left women. And what the left women are, are husbands that just walked out and left them. And so they're just, you know, single, but they didn't want to be single. Their husbands just deserted them. It's so, Okay. It has been observed that every morning women get up early and manage to get milk from the animals. Now, this is a picture of we actually built like a barn structure there that you see, and they've got like a, a wall around here to keep them in. And I'm sure the picture is not doing it justice because it looks real small, but I did ask Surav if the animals get to get out of there, like to go walk around and get grass and stuff. He said, oh, yes, he said, um, that they do take them out and they, they get to go, go out of there. And so they're, they're taking care of them. So they say they nourish the animals just like their own children. So this is one of the main reasons for setting up a dairy farm, for making the women to be able to be sustained. The dairy farming has given a new hope to those women who did not have any kind of income source and lost their hopes. But they have now found new hope that this has changed their life statement from no hope to hope. So they've come to Jesus Christ. They've been helped to be able to have income now to help to take care of them and their children. And they're providing a wonderful um, service to the community with, you know, the milk and this being a dairy farm, the milk and the butter and all that, that comes from there. And we praise God. You know, I thank God for you guys who partnered with us and that we're able to help them to do these projects and to do this for these women. The Bible tells us to um, help to, t to meet the needs and to look out for and take care of widows and orphans, the poor and the needy, and that's exactly what we're doing. Uh, the real, the real needy. We have people in America that like to beg. They're professional beggars. They don't care to work. They don't want a job. They don't want to help themselves. So I'm not talking about all of that. I'm talking about real people who needed real help, the real poor and needy, okay, real widows. Um, so I praise God for that amazing project. And here you see a picture of some of the goats and how they, they um, keep them pinned up and how they're taking care of them. And it says, through which we are able to share how God tests each one of us, and if one door is closed for anyone, God has a plan behind it, and he opens a hundred doors to overcome that certain situation. We have open farm for widows in which we have four cows and ten goats, and I praise the Lord for it. Cows um, here, here in India, they are not cheap. So I praise God that we've managed to be able to get four cows and those goats and to help these ladies and their families, and I praise the Lord for it. And he shares here is Shushma's story. Shushma is on the left, moved with her two daughters to a new village to escape the trauma of losing her seven-month-old son to illness and then being blamed for his death by her husband and her in-laws who taunted her relentlessly. Her husband would drink and then beat and abuse her, and she felt pressure from the in-laws to have another child, even though she was not ready emotionally. Even in her new village, she had trouble finding a job due to poor literacy. 
but she was introduced to us and to Three Hearts Ministry, was able to help build a poly house that's kind of like a greenhouse, as I think what we would call it here, for her to grow vegetables to sell at the market. Now she is able to earn her, her own way by herself, and more than that, she is also sharing the gospel and how God has been working in her life continually and making her more strong in the faith, and now she is having a continually, he probably means being able to continually take care of herself or um, maybe having hope continually or something. Um, but if you notice there, how sad is that? She was traumatized and sad and down and depressed from losing her seven-month-old son to illness. And instead, her husband blamed her for his death, and so did her in-laws. Can you imagine losing a baby and how hard that is on everyone, the parents, the mom? And there she is mourning and grieving. And that husband and that family is taunting her and giving her a hard time and accusing her that she's the reason so bad it was that she left. That's horrible. But I praise the Lord that she came into contact with our you know, extension, Three Hearts Church Ministry in India. And look how her life has changed. And now she's going around telling everybody about Jesus. And she's able to take care of herself. And we praise God for that. We give Jesus the glory. Now Pastor Cher's success story. Nali Kalan is a village in Repure Block in Dehradun District of Uttarakhand, State, India. It is located 11 kilometers towards the east from district headquarters, Dehradun. This water catchment has been set up in one of our selected villages, Nali Kala. It has population around 85 to 90 in the village. It has been a success. Now the water, so the villagers, now there's water coming there, you see. So the villagers now don't have to go far for the water to, for the fields, for their animals like cow, buffalo, etc. We built the water catchment in different areas and have been able to successfully generate water in the dry mountains. It is being a lot of help to those women who had to go far away to get water for the house, for the cattle, and for their fields too. Those women had to travel for long distances to get water before for all of their needs around their home to take care of everything, the cattle, the crops, the children, their homes, everything. And so we praise God now that this water catchment that they set up is working and there's water there and that makes it convenient for them. He says villages were able to get water in summers also as... Also, as these water sources used to get dried up, but after making pit holes and the catchment, we were able to gather water in summers also. This is helping the, villages, the village for getting water supply throughout the year. See what a blessing that is. And now here in this picture, this has been a great success of the SHG, where not only women are taking part in the activity, but this is the first time men of the community have come forward. It's been a huge change in the community that women and men are working together for the community development. This was not just sowing plants in the field, but it was the togetherness of the community development. It has put a huge impact in the society for the first time that the men of the village have created their SHG for the development of the village with developing each other skills and potential. I don't think the men and women usually work together there in India on anything. So I think that was the really big deal was that the men were now getting involved too. And here, construction of a water catchment system 
for one village has brought the whole village, men and women together, and seen everyone benefit. And this is Pastor Dauber here. I think with the stick, he's trying to show where the water comes down. Now they have consistent water supply throughout the year, enough for their livestock and for irrigating the fields. Greenery is returning to the village, improving the environment and increasing crop yields. And with plenty of water to go around, women no longer have the back-breaking burden of walking long distances, carrying water, reducing their back issues. They were having problems physically carrying all of the water. They're trying to, you know, they're traveling long distances and they're trying to make a big haul back and that was having, that was taking a toll on their bodies physically. So he says it's reducing their back issues and improving their health. For the first time in the project, men have participated and worked together with the women for a successful outcome. A village thriving through teamwork as our vision is to create the Eden Garden again in which God kept us so we are trying to redevelop the environment as it was created. Now about the hostel program. And here you see, hostel fellowship is also a big point of our mission and vision. We need to provide easy method to understand the teaching of Bible study. We adopt the method of video shows at computer. It is really appreciable that children do learn a lot through this meth method. First, we show them Bible study film and then teach them. We are proud to say that children took more and more attention and doing their regular Bible study. We thank God's kindness. He gave wonderful responsibility to seek people and save their life for his kingdom. At present, we have ch uh, 20 children in our hostel and four staff members to take care of them. Some of the children are single parent and some children are from those families in which there are school, uh, there are alcohol abuse. Um, the first time I was really getting familiar with the word hostile, we, we always think hostile, hostility, that has nothing to do with it. A hostile is, um, it's a place where they come and live that we're providing for them. And there are poor children there, there are orphans there, it's a mixture of the orphans, and the poor children, the needy. Like he said, some of them only have a single parent. Some of them, um, they were in homes where there was alcohol abuse going on. Uh, he doesn't mention it, but we have had orphans there also. So it's a mixture, and then gradually they graduate out of the hostile house. Okay, it's where they're living, and they're being taught God's word, and they're getting an education. Now here is Three Hearts School. And, uh, and you see them all pictured here. You can see in the very back, you see Pastor Dauber. And that man standing right beside him, I had to ask and be sure if, if that was Sue Rob or not. But it's not Sue Rob, and you'll see why I had to ask that in a little bit. Okay, but you see Pastor there, and you see all the children and the teachers from Three Hearts School. He says, school is being a great opportunity for Three Hearts Ministry to share the gospel among each and every family in the area. Back in 2016, we had started the school with only 10 children. But today, by the grace of God, we have 84 students and 11 teaching and non-teaching staff in the school. Still, more of the students are wanting admission in the school, but we don't have enough furniture and for these students only, so we are trying to hold admissions. You see, the more that God provides through those that he brings that have those open hearts and he's opened their hearts to give, the more we can do, okay? And so we're not able to take all of the children that want to come and attend these schools. So he said now they're holding admissions so that they can, you know, take as many as they can. And so um, we just don't have enough provision to receive all of the children in right now. But I do praise God for the ones that are, are able to attend and for the, this great work that's being done for God's glory. And like he's always shared in the past, those children learn and they go home and they teach and tell and share to their family. So they take it back home. So the gospel that's taught in the Christian school is also going back 
when they go and they see their families and when they go home and they teach their families too. Now, and here's a picture of the, some of the school children and they are doing one of their cultural dances here. The school is from kindergarten to class five and it's the first Christian value school in the area. You know, we've been talking about Hinduism. Uh, I'm teaching on the New Age right now and New Age is based on Hinduism, the occult. That's where these children are. They're in India. They're in the Himalayan mountains. They're surrounded by Hinduism, which is everywhere. And so it's the first Christian-valued school in the area, the first school that's teaching Jesus Christ, that's sharing God's word. That's a real light to those there in India. And he says, uh, so we are glad that God has helped and supported us in the journey so far. Sister Sherry, Brother Scott Kennedy, and Three Hearts Church Congregation, that they have been always praying and supporting us in all the activities that are being run through them. Without your prayers and support, it would not be possible this much. And he's going to share, here are some prayer requests. And you guys that... Um, well, I'll just put it this way. Pray over these prayer requests. I'm going to share them out to you guys. Be praying along with us over these requests that Pastor Dauber shares. He says, please continue to pray for our house churches. There's 58 of them. That God helps all our church members to grow more in him. And please pray for the school children that what seeds we have sown in them may become fruit for his kingdom. And in one of our area, Village Body Gone in Pari, in which we are planning to open a school, please pray that God provides everything. This will be the first school in that area with Christian values and teachings. So they are wanting to open another school. There's always more work to be done. We're waiting on the provision, right? It takes money to get all of these things done in this world. And so we want to be praying for God's provision so we can do all of these things. He says, please pray for our family that God continues to protect us and keep us safe from everything and for my healing continually. And we do praise God for pastor's hip surgery because everything went well and he's able to walk around without all that pain and he's doing so much better and we thank you, Lord Jesus, for that. Now here, this last picture, on the far right, that's Sonali, and then you have Sue Rob next to her, next to him, Pastor Dauber and Sunita, and then there's little Shamira standing in front of her parents. And now, if you look at Sue Rob and you look back at that teacher, you can see why I was asking, is that you or who? So um, I was not familiar with Sue Rob with this beard with this facial hair. So I did have a little chat with him about that. And um, he said that his dad picks on him and, and, you know, about the facial hair too. Well, I showed Sue Rob a picture of some of the guys here in America and what they're doing with this long, scraggly, you know, shaggy, crazy looking, unkempt mess. And he said, oh no, auntie, I would never do that. He said, uh, and I, th or I might have showed it to Pastor Dauber, and he, he was like he would never allow him to do that. I mean, I, I don't even know why, you know, people here in America are doing that. But anyway, kind of getting off on a tangent there. So anyway, we're talking about Sue Rob's facial hair. So anyway, you know, he's a young guy, so he's exploring and seeing, you know, and they had beards and things in the Bible too. So anyway. But he, he's a handsome man. But I just didn't recognize him because I'm not used to seeing him with the, with the beard. Okay, so here is Pastor's thank you letter. He says, first of all, I would like to thank God for helping us and making ways for us in every situation. And he is our all source. He provides us every need and we have. And he knows the right time to provide everything. I would also like to thank Sister Sherry, Brother Scott, and Kennedy, who has always been supporting us and helping us. And I would like to thank Three Hearts Church Congregation, who came forward for the ministry and helping us continually. 
with Christ's love, Pastor Dauber Singh and family. And I just want to say thank you guys for standing with us and helping us to accomplish and do these great works. God bless you guys.